So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to another instalment of Silent Night from 2012 in Pieces. I am your host, Duncan McLeish. Welcome to the show. We are taking the movie Silent Night from 2012. That's right, this is a classic, in quotation marks, remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night. It does not resemble Silent Night, Deadly Night in any way other than there is a Santa, well a dressed up Santa killer. Um, it's not the worst remake in the world, but it is so much fun to talk about because of this episode. We are doing minutes 55 through 60, which has some of the best worst dialogue in a horror remake of all time. And I am overjoyed to say that on this episode, I'll be joined by a very good friend. He's already recorded one, but because we release these episodes in pieces out of order, like a jigsaw, um... This might be the first time you're hearing them, or this might be the second. Mr. David Garrett Jr., welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Awesome. This is not us recording back-to-back <laughs> with the other one we did. We wouldn't right. do that. <laughs> Never do that. We're, we're, hey, listen, we are recording this on the day we're releasing it. Let's not break that fourth wall for any listener out there who might not know how podcasts are done. Um, This episode is minutes... 55 through 60. This will start with um, our hero deputy's father, who is dressed like I'm gonna I'm gonna put this like a decent Santa, minus the hat on a telephone. This will close out at the one hour mark with uh, with that same officer basically saying to our boss, "I fucked up. Okay, I fucked up, sir, and I have to live with that for the rest of my life. But you can trust me." Right, that's that's our bookends here. This um, is a dialogue heavy, not much happening five minutes. But if anyone right. has already heard the 30 to 35 minute that we've recorded, depending on the release order, I said on this one, this has some of my best worst <laughs> dialogue in this movie. And this has primo Malcolm McDowell, who clearly did not know. Like He, he must have had like an unpaid bill or wanted to build a swimming pool or something because he is churning out some of the worst dialogue of all time and an innumerable different versions of not quite American accent it's the best thing ever like it, it really honestly makes me smile now we'd mentioned on the the previous episode which may have not dropped because I need to one day I'll release them linear but until then <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want. This is how you're gonna get it. <laughs> like when you watched this the first time, you said you watched it with a buddy. You did it last yep. year for the first time. 
Like, were you aware that Malcolm McDill was in it? And were you aware of its reputation? Um, I knew it was a like violent Christmas movie. Outside of that, I did like I knew he was in it because I was working at Family Video, which is like a video rental store when this yep. came out. I didn't watch it when I was there for whatever reason, but I knew he was in it just because he was I mean his name was plastered on the cover. So and I would have the we would show a screener DVD during um, like peak hours and I would watch the screener on this. Nice, nice, yeah. Like, I was fully aware the first time I watched this that he was in this movie. Like, because this is the weird time period that Malcolm McDowell was in, like, horror movies. Like, he just right. he'd not long worked with Rob Zombie, and for some reason, like, horror movies were like Malcolm McDowell in her movie. I was like, yeah, because mm. <laughs> he is, like, people forget he's a fucking great actor. Like, right. Genuinely. I mean, one of my favorite movies is A Clockwork Orange, and, like, there you he. Go. He is he steals the movie. His performance yes. in *The Clockwork Orange* with Stanley Kubrick, arguably the greatest filmmaker of all time, is right. nothing short of high-level genius. And he continued to like be like a really interesting actor throughout. Even more so, like recently he did that um, witch movie last year, *The Name Escapes Me*. Uh fuck! But like his performance in it was incredible. He's a he's a great on-screen presence. He yes. is terrible in this movie <laughs> entertaining <laughs> as fuck but terrible in this movie because he can't quite decide where his cop where his cop character is from and the director clearly doesn't care to say not oh, right you're an englishman that moved to america and that would be fine it's kind of like no you're an american who lived in england no uh maybe has an english parent uh did an <laughs> english study course study Shakespeare I don't know um, because the accent goes absolutely everywhere as yeah. we will find it's not the worst thing here the script is terrible <laughs> like <laughs> it's so bad so anyway we open here with um, our protagonist's father dressed like Santa sitting on a chair speaking to his daughter on the phone and she's like that dad I choked and he says trust your gut when the time comes, you'll know what to do. <laughs> and she returns. This is amazing. Honestly, this is one of my favourite shit ever. She's like, listen, Dad, don't go to that parade tonight. As we have a situation, and one of the Santas, it's, it's really dangerous, but don't tell Mum I don't want her to worry. And our dad says, this is a real fucking thing, there's no worry. This isn't the first time our, <laughs> our banterman or whatever their surname is, it's had to bring down a bad Santa. Like, I put in quotation marks here, what the fuck yeah, does that uh, even mean? Like, there's no context and never explain. It's not the first time you've, we've had to bring down... Someone in our family has had to bring down a bad Santa before. Like, <laughs> when? Like, Just when, a like, drunken Santa at a previous <laughs> festival of this. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> You gave me a lump of coal. Fuck you, Santa. <laughs> like, it's, it's just so bizarre. Like it's such a weird throwaway line, but um, he's like that. Um, you'll find you, you'll find <laughs> you'll find them. You'll catch them. Goodbye. And he hangs up the phone. And I'm like, I wish that all calls with a family member were so brief. Like <laughs> so if I try and get off the phone with my mum. She's like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll talk next week. Oh, by the way, and you're like, oh, we're here for five minutes more. Uh, <laughs> what are we doing? And then you get to the end, I'm like, feels like there's a natural conclusion to this call coming up. And then she'll be like, that. oh, did I tell you? And I'm like, fuck my <laughs> life. Like, but this guy, yeah. this guy's like, like basically, like, uh, <laughs> it's like, fuck you, goodbye. He's like, you'll find, you'll find them, you'll catch them, goodbye. So, officer. Branterman or Banterman or whatever her fucking name is. She walks into the station. Malcolm McDill, MVP this movie by country yeah. fucking mile. Next to crazy ranting Santa guy who has my favourite monologue pretty much in any horror remake of all time. We'll get to him. Not in this, but during the reviews yeah. here. Um like he is like he like basically he's he's writing like the name of his main suspect and he underscores it with chalk on a blackboard and he's like that yep. public enemy number one <laughs> and, like, and she's like Carson's spelt with a double S and he's like does it? <laughs> double S? Double screwed 
because yeah. we are somewhere between not quite American, not quite British. What the fuck is this accent? He's like, listen, if the bars all closed, <laughs> if the bars all closed down, we're all screwed. And I put here in brackets, this is this movie's version of Jaws. Like the town relies on the Santa con. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's one day a year where loads of people dressed like Santa get pissed in bars. That's a good and, point, yeah. And keeps the town afloat. I've been in New York when the the Santa run happens. The Santa is their version of Santa Con. It's a five okay. day run. And yeah. When I took my like I took my family over when and we didn't run in it. I just want to stress that. But uh, <laughs> Vanessa. Um, who is on the um she's on the podcast with Darren uh the VD made, clinic VD clinic thank you uh, Vanessa I met Vanessa we went out for dinner it was great and I was asking her I was like that's so cool that you've got this because she's like no 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 it's a, there's a lot of people descend on Central Park run dressed in Santa suits get very very drunk after that and then if you are walking around like the Manhattan area at like maybe 10 o'clock at night, it is just people dressed in Santa costumes vomiting down their costumes and beards. It's just like a sea of sick. It's like it's worse than St. Patrick's Day. And that's just always stuck with me that Santa cons are bad, right? So that's it soured, it soured my opinion. It's the same way that that scene in Ghostbuster and not Ghostbusters Gremlins, where she's talking about her dad being trapped in the chimney and like decomposing and the family's like what's the smell I'm like anyone that goes comes down a chimney dressed as Santa deserves to rot it's just stuck in there right <laughs> it's in there but anyway Santa Con is the thing that keeps the town afloat so he's like that uh, does it double S double screwed listen if the bars all closed down we're all screwed he can run but he can't hide I want this son of a bitch behind bars before dawn or my aunt's my uncle which I hear that line, my aunt's my uncle, and I'm like, that, that's a terribly written line. Yes. Trust me, within, within 30 seconds, he's going to top that. <laughs> like, this yeah. dialogue is awful. And, um, like, Deputy Branneman saying like that, I'm not so sure, Sheriff, and he's like, you're not so sure about what? And she's like, about Carson, it doesn't stack up. Stack up to what? And she's like, as a suspect, and he, his line, this is fucking genius. And someone put, like, ink to paper on this one. Don't put avocado on a burger. <laughs> oh, God, her so bad. <laughs> dude, uh. dude, like, she looks like I look hearing that line. With a so confused. Of, so, like, what the fuck? Did he, what? And I'm also going to say I've had avocado on a burger before. Perfectly fine. So I don't know what he's moaning about here. And she says, what? Collectively, we all say what? And he says, Simple is always best. Carson killed Jordan and Elena and those two degenerates at Crazy Benny's Motel. Hell, <laughs> he even tried to kill you. Did you forget about that? Which is a great point. If someone tried to kill me and there was murder... He, he'd be a suspect, was, yeah. hundred... Like, this is why me and you are the same. Right, we both worked at video stores at informative times in our movie loving life. Right, <laughs> and also we both had podcasts that review horror movies, and also we are like that. If someone tried to kill me and people started dying in the area, I would be like, you know who who might be a suspect? The dude that tried to kill me, not this deputy. She's like, fuck that. Taylor, she's like, <laughs> but Carson's a coke dealer. So if you deal drugs, you don't murder anyone. Oh, get her in the bin. I hate her. She's like, why would he Why would he kill his clients? And what would his motive for killing Jordan be? And the little girl, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. McDill's response. <laughs> it's like, there you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was like, is he uh, hungry? He's hungry. Right, he so. must be. It it he, must be around his time for have dinner, and he just hasn't yet. He's he's doing the thing from Usual Suspects, where he's looking around the room and just picking things. It's an empty burger wrapper. He's like that. Oh, burger! And then he sees an empty. He's like, hummus on the burger. Is it hummus on the burger? Is what it is. Like he said, like, now you're piling on hummus on top of the burger too. And she's like, what if he's? And this is a stretch. What if he's punishing him? What? If, 
he knew that Jordan was treating, cheating and Frankie and Goldie were making porn. And Matilda's like that. Who would know all that? And she says, someone they knew, someone they trusted. And I love this. Matilda's like that. Like a drug dealer? <laughs> he's yes. Like, he, uh, yes, he's like a drug dealer. Nothing. <laughs> Like he's learned nothing. Like she's she's like that. This is the this is what will crack the case. And he's like that. So the guy that Aunt Carson, the coke dealer, and she's like, no, not the drug dealer. She's like, sir, a drug dealer with morals. Come on. And he's like, all right. I read the magazines. Christmas is the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's more of enough. I want you to go out there and search the streets, every street. Come on. So, David. In this movie, with this sheriff, if you're sitting reading a <laughs> reading a magazine, and that magazine is like that, women that have breast implants are like 75% more likely to rob banks, and a bank is robbed. Malcolm McDowell is like that. It's a woman with fake tits. Like, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, rob, let's find out who has had breast implants. It is just, it's fucking terrible dialogue. Yes. It, uh, it, you're right though he's like taking little bits of information but he's also not like he's not listening to her or connecting how things would make more sense he is sheriff how did he right. get to sheriff like, like there's something happened in this time before that he's been like that I will run my ca- like because you have a weird system in America where people yes. <laughs> like civilians can run for the office of sheriff which in the UK it is weird is it's not even just weird. It's like it's morally fucking wrong. Like I'm like I have no qualifications. I've never done this job before, but I have a point that the people agree with. So I am now in charge of the law. Like <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> no, that would never happen. People that hold like high offices within the police here, like commissioners, etc., are appointed by government. Who are Which makes more by- sense. People, yeah, like that makes like you are right, David. That that makes more sense. It's almost as if you like people from here moved across to an undiscovered land, went over there, <laughs> occupied it, and didn't take any of the sensible lessons that we gave them when they were here. Yeah, that's fitting. <laughs> I love you all, America, but that's a silly, silly rule. And if you do that, you occasionally get people like Malcolm McDowell who. It's terrible in this movie. Um, so, like, on top of all this as well, on top of all the silliness here about hummus and burgers and terrible dialogue and just in general being way off the mark, like, this guy does not have a clue about anything. Um, we get this random, like, our protagonist deputies like that. What if he's punishing them? Like, like... Like, what if he's sort of like, just out of nowhere, she's now connecting dots about maybe this is a vengeful Santa that knows everyone and is actually dealing out some death to those that are not on the good list, but are actually <laughs> are on the naughty list, which is like, a, to me, that's a stretch. I'd be like that, like, where is the evidence? How did you get this? And, um... <laughs> yeah, this is something that works in a movie, but like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if cops are going to connect this. Like, they're never going to be able to do this, right? And, like, well, that's why my, my deals like, actually, you know what? Christmas is the number one holiday for people going nuts. And that's enough motive. Like, it's literally, that's why he leans back on that. He's like, that. if that's a motive, then this is a motive. And the, she leaves, and then, to no one, Malcolm McDowell's like, double S, my ass. And you're <laughs> like, oh, you're speaking to... And then we cut to... Our deputy in one of the sheriff's cars. She's outside. She's looking through a case file, just at mutilated bodies and clip art. And out of nowhere, a Santa walks up to the window, startles her by knocking on the window. She drops the window down. The Santa drops her beard, and it's her friend Joel who's like, Aubrey, and she's like that. Joel, hi. And he's like, What's this I hear about? A dead guy over in Watson. The body was electrocuted, and she's like, like looking left to right, shady as fuck. She's not like she's not making eye contact. She's like, eh, uh, 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 I don't know anything about that. And he's like, eh, I didn't believe it either. And then he walks away. Once again, who is this scene for? Out with the like tawdry fucking jump scare. Right. 
we get some amazing like Malcolm McDowell is not done with her five minutes, buddy, and I love it. He comes in yeah. the and he's like that. <laughs> Carson is here. I can smell it. The smell of fear. And she's like, I, I can't smell it. And he's like, no, because you're not attuned. Heightened senses. Almost something primeval from when we hunted cave bears and dinosaurs. Man did not kill dinosaurs. He's clearly not what... I'm going to mention Jurassic Park again for no good reason. Like, man and dinosaurs were separated by millions of fucking years. Yeah, by <laughs> long stretches of time. I mean, like, some people don't necessarily agree. But yeah, like, for most everybody else... Yeah, there is a huge gap between the two. I I love you for saying some people don't agree. Those people <laughs> are 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 out there though. They're like yeah, they're like dinosaurs. Like Jesus was around, and they say, like Jesus walked past a dinosaur. Uh, he just I, mean, I do love the meme where the he's like riding one. Like, yeah. that that that's a personal favorite. <laughs> Dear diary, have you seen that scene? And have you read that scene in the book Dune? <laughs> where he rides the sandworm. Well, today I did the same on a Diplodocus. Um, <laughs> it's just like, it's so, it's so silly. Um, he's like, from about hunting cave bears and dinosaurs, and she's like, Sheriff, I have an article here from Otesca, Montana, five years ago. <laughs> Multiple homicides. The guy dressed like Santa uh, was, you know, whoever the guy is, she mentions, it uh, like, puts him and Otesca at the same time. Malcolm McDowell's response to this vital bit of evidence is so? And she's like that uh, we're, we're looking for the wrong Santa. And then we... And I mean, I will also say right here yeah. would actually be a better spot to point out that the sin thing, or that he is mm. killing people for stuff like that, because then you could be like, oh, is like well, he did these killings there, like obviously they don't know any of those people, or like why they potentially were killed but that could be some conjecture where you're like well like it's kind of weird to do it this time and then we're doing it here like maybe there's a correlation 100 percent like a savvy non choked up deputy cop <laughs> would have built her case better she's terrible about building her case and also yes malcolm mcdowell is so dismissive it's like it's kind of amazing um yeah he's, he's like my way or the highway he's and so then, mean to her <laughs> he's so he's horrible there and then um, we, we jump to he's like to be honest he's not got the greatest team no right she choked during like a vital uh sting the other dude is fucking terrible and mm -hmm. the chick that's on the reception is pretty bad as well and <laughs> yes. he doesn't know where he's from hence his accent yep. um he's obsessed with burgers and toppings and it's, yeah. it's just all wrong this will not solve the case and um we then cut to them breaking a mobile home yes uh, malcolm mcdill was complaining about how the state of the place is in the smell and mcdill says See if you can find any weapons. And she's like that. We're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> and Dill dresses her down. He's like that. Yep. Just who the hell do you think you are, deputy? <laughs> this line. Spoken from an Englishman that has done Shakespeare on stage in an American accent is the greatest thing. One of the greatest <laughs> things that's ever happened. He's like, don't you tell me how to suss out a perp. <laughs> Yeah, oh my. Yeah, when he said that, like my eyes rolled back in my head, but I was like, you know what? Good for you, Malcolm. Good for I you. I swear to God, this is the only time he's ever said the word perp. Right? <laughs> it might also be the only time he's ever used the word sus. I was going to say, that's probably the other first time for that one, too. <laughs> and you can see it in his face. You don't have a fucking clue what's happening here. This is not the Queen's English or the King's English or any English. This is just American slang. It's like, not when you choke with that one time that you had the chance. And she's like, okay, I fucked up. I fucked up, sir. And I have to live with that with the rest of my life. And then she walks past him as she's walking past. She says, you can trust me. And that is where we end. This yep. segment, compared to your previous segment, has no death. Yep. It is all dialogue. And it has primo, primo, primo Malcolm McDowell. I can't stress this enough. Every scene that he's in this movie is a scene that you're enriched for as if you're watching it. Um, standout moment, favourite line of dialogue, favourite thing that happens? 
I mean, it's got to be the keep the burger simple that you're putting the <laughs> avocado on there and then you're trying to put the hummus on there. Like yeah, that's avocado my and favorite. hummus. Did I will have a I will have a burger with avocado. I I've had it before. It's good. <laughs> it's lovely. I will have a burger with hummus. It's unconventional, but I'll have it. I would I, I would be confused if the burger had both avocado and hummus. So. Yeah. What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, like we're in the, <laughs> the Middle East and in Mexico. This feels weird. Um, should I be wearing a sombrero or should it be in something Middle East? I can't think of anything. Um, it's a great line. I'm with you on this one. It's up there, like, between that and don't... don't <laughs> <laughs> Don't you tell me it's Sasa a perp? Um, <laughs> that was the other one that I was like, maybe I go with this one. Oh, did you can feel, you can feel the will to live. You can feel him looking off to the distance and remembering how much he's getting paid to be in this right. movie and go like that. It's, it, it, it balances out. I can do this. Um, it's, well, this is a terrible five minutes, and I love every second of its terribleness. Oh, same. Yes. <laughs> it, it just is so entertaining. Um, you are a busy guy. You do written reviews, you do audio content, you have stuff out there for people to check, and you're active in the posting. David, how can people check out your stuff? Uh, well, my podcast is Journey with a Cinephile, a horror movie podcast. That can be found anywhere that podcasts are found and listened to. And then I also will have... Um, Pages for each of those episodes, as well as all my written reviews, are on horrorreview.webnode.com as well. Amazing. Ladies and gents, we have more of this content to come. With. This is a busy month. This is 24 back-to-back -back episodes of the podcast under the stairs, predominantly on the NPC series here. And even if you don't like them, there's a lot of people out there do not like the format. I don't care. Don't you tell me how to suss out a perp. Um, I'm going to be back I'm going to be chatting to you tomorrow in some fashion way shape or form until then take care